Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 8th of January. India summons Maldivian envoy Amit Roh over remarks on PN Modi. Baloch activists in US, Canada and Germany stage anti-Pakistan protests. And Bangladesh PM Hasina secures fourth straight term as expected. And now for all the details, Indian Foreign Ministry on Monday summoned Maldivian High Commissioner Ibrahim Shaheeb amid a diplomatic spat after three Maldivian lawmakers made derogatory remarks against Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The three deputy ministers of President Muizu's government, Malsha Sharif, Mariam Shuina and Abdullah Mahzoom Majid on social media platform made objectionable comments against PM Modi in a response to a video of him visiting the Indian islands of Lakshwadeep to promote local tourism. Distancing itself from the remarks, the Maldivian government has suspended the three junior ministers and said the comment does not reflect the official position of President Muizu's government. The remarks were also condemned by opposition leaders of Maldives, who termed the diplomatic blunder on social media as reprehensible and odious. Such surprising for me, why should Maldives uh, uh, you know, say something about what is going to happen in Lakshadweep and whatever our Honorable Prime Minister have uh, spoke on uh, you know, futuristic scope for tourism development in Lakshadweep. I still surprise why such a comments have come from the Deputy Prime Minister and the Ministers of Maldives. And India's Supreme Court on Monday quashed the early release of 11 men who had been jailed for life for gang raping a pregnant woman and murdering her relatives during the 2002 Gujarat riots. The top court directed the men to surrender to jail authorities within two weeks. The victim, Bilkis Bano, was three months pregnant when she was gang raped and seven of her relatives, including her three year old daughter, were murdered during the riots. The men, convicted in 2008, were freed by the Gujarat government in August 2022 as per a remission policy. Their release had drawn widespread condemnation. In its verdict on Monday, the Apex Court held that Gujarat did not have the authority to reduce the sentence since the trial had been moved to Mumbai, making neighbouring Maharashtra state responsible for the decision. Moving on, Baloch activists in the US, Canada and Germany staged demonstrations this past weekend to highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan and in solidarity with sit-in protesters in Islamabad. A report. Baloch activists in Canada and the US came out in huge numbers to express solidarity with the sit-in protesters in Islamabad, who are seeking accountability in cases of enforced disappearances by the Pakistani military in Balochistan. During the protest in Toronto and Washington, D.C., the demonstrators highlighted plight of people in Balochistan who have been enduring rights violations for the past 70 years. They also raised concern over Pakistan's denial and condemned the Prime Minister's recent statement claiming that the issue is mere propaganda. Because what is happening is atrocious. Um, it is a human rights violation and it should stop. You know, we want a free Balochistan where Pakistan does not have the power over us to, you know, commit these atrocities. And, you know, we're here for a free Balochistan and for an end to the genocide. A similar protest was also held by activists of the Baloch National Movement in Germany to express solidarity with sit-in protesters in Islamabad. They said Pakistani military has been directly involved in Baloch genocide and the so-called democratic government of Pakistan has failed to act. Our purpose is here to kill the war dead. There is a systematic genocide going on in Balochistan by the, committed by the Pakistani security forces. But the entire world is unknown to this uh, great humanitarian crisis in Balochistan. At least five policemen were killed in a blast near a police vehicle in Bajor district of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa on Monday. Footage released by the local rescue service on social media showed ambulances and rescue personnel outside a hospital. 
A police official said the personnel were en route to provide security to a polio vaccination team. The injured were shifted to a nearby hospital and three to four critically injured people will be transported to Peshawar, he said. The Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan later claimed responsibility through a statement. And amid a low turnout and boycott by the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina secured a fourth straight term as expected, with the party winning an absolute majority in the general election, the poll body said on Monday. According to results announced by Election Commission till noon, Hasina's Awami League party won 167 seats out of 227 seats. Independent candidates, many of them backed by the Awami League, won 49 seats in the Sunday polls. However, BNP, which boycotted the elections, has accused the ruling party of propping up dummy independent candidates to try to make the election look credible, a claim the Awami League has denied. There were mixed reactions from local Bangladeshis, many of whom would demanded change after Awami League's expected election win. <laughs> Moving on, Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikrame Singhi on Sunday expressed his desire to have land connectivity between Mannar and South India and said he had already discussed the idea to build a bridge with PM Modi. The remarks came as Vikrame Singhe visited Tamil-dominated northern province. Sri Lanka last week took the first step to set up the much-delayed Commission for Truth, Unity and Reconciliation, a major demand by the Tamil community since the end of the civil war in 2009. The UN estimates in the final offensive around 40,000 Tamil civilians were killed. The Commission is expected to provide people with a platform, an opportunity for truth-telling and means of effective remedies for the aggrieved. And colourful kites of different shapes and sizes dotted the skyline of India's western Ahmedabad city on Sunday as over 150 participants battled to outdo each other at the week-long International Kite Festival. Participants from more than 70 countries, including Ukraine, Denmark, France and England, among others, took part in the festival. Spectators were left spellbound by kites in shapes of a horse, monsters and cartoon characters. Kites bearing pictures of Hindu Lord Ram and the Ram Mandir in Ayodhya also grabbed eyeballs at the event. Um, in the past, it's been really fun. I've gotten to meet like a lot of different kite flyers, also from India, which has been really interesting. And I've met a lot of like nice Indian people, which and I've been welcomed here. I always feel welcomed with open arms. The festival comes ahead of the Harvest Festival of Makar Sankranti. People fly kites in the run after the festival, celebrated annually on January 14. Makar Sankranti also heralds the coming of spring. Oh, that was great. That, uh, I really enjoyed to join this festival. Uh, thank you, thank you very much thank for you. the invitation. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, so friendly people, so many different countries here. That's great festival. Yeah. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.